1950s brake barrel tech. Is it better than the new stuff? Coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&M Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Alright guys, the Virau HW35E comes to us from Germany and it has been in continuous production since 1951. Here in the States it's available in either 177 or 22. It measures 42 inches long. By itself it weighs a healthy 8.4 pounds. As you see it here to include a scope and mounts it weighs in at an even 10. It's available in this walnut only with either a black or stainless finish. It ships with an owner's manual and six front sight discs. It comes with a one year warranty and you can pick one up from the crew at Air Guns of Arizona for around 510 bucks. Now the 35E is powered by a coil spring propelled short stroke piston that's good for around 10 to 11 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. It gets there by pushing a six and a half to nine and a half grain pellet at between 875 and 690 feet per second with extreme spreads at around 30 foot per second for tin and 12 foot per second for lead with both of those pellets holding on to about eight foot pounds of energy, 25 yards down range. Now the rifle also takes advantage of a hooded front sight with those six interchangeable front sight discs, sling studs for a three quarter inch strap, a super stealthy soft brake barrel design, a rear sight that's adjustable for both windage and elevation, an 11 millimeter dovetail atop a seamless cylinder, a true European sourced walnut stock with finger cuts, hand cut checkering, a rubber butt pad, and a very vintage looking black and white plastic grip cap, and a dual stage match grade adjustable record trigger with auto resetting safety. So is vintage really better? The HW35E's short stroke makes for a quicker firing cycle. And a quicker firing cycle can make it easier to shoot heavier, slower moving pellets more accurately. Reducing dwell time is the name of the game. In doing so, we'll make the whole rig less sensitive to a perfect hold. And we'll take some pressure off you when it comes to that all important follow through. All are your friends in the moment when you need the accuracy to be there. At the heart of the 35 is a super stealthy manually operated breech wedge lock that also does well to make the gun kinder to your braking hand. You don't have to use it on the way up, but you do have to use it on the way down. It does add a little bit more time, but it also mutes the lockup, which can be advantageous for those follow up shots. That is if the click of the auto resetting safety doesn't negate the whole design to begin with. But either way, it is much kinder to the palm of your braking hand and is overall quieter than other brake barrels with auto resetting safeties. The shot cycle of the 35 is sharper and quicker than other comparable brake barrels. And the denser European walnut stock does do a noticeably better job of dampening. It all comes at the expense of some added length and weight, however. But the gun's user experience is enhanced, and operating it all is very enjoyable. Cocking the 35 is rewardingly smooth and light, and in the hands the gun is well balanced and perfectly tossable. 
Field load up is quick and easy, and after some practice, operating the added switch gear becomes second nature. Fun even. Stealth mode operates just as easily, but takes a little bit longer. The release lever itself is lightly sprung and is easy to operate. If you're new to AEAC, pellet speed is tracked with Doppler radar, from the muzzle all the way on down to the target in set increments. This will allow you to determine leaving and arriving energy levels, as well as calculate ballistic coefficient. Guys, the record triggers in these Virows are always amazing. They're dual stage, they're match grade, they're very clean, predictable, and light, and they always arrive out of the box breaking at about two and a half pounds or so. But to get the accuracy out of them I share with you in these videos, you'll want to refer to the owner's manual that ships with the gun and learn how to get your break weight down to about a pound or so. Now that first stage take up is clean and light and the second stage stop is well defined and breaks very cleanly with just a little bit of pressure. Fourteen point seven ounces. The thirty five did well with an unusually large assortment of pellets, where most brake barrels will wind up liking just a few. It's just one of those things where you gotta put in the work to find out what your gun's gonna like. And unfortunately for me, this one liked everything. For the backstory on that, and to partake in the discovery and approach as I learned my way through the HW thirty five you can hit me up on my second YouTube channel, AEAC Vlog. I will share important things there that won't make it here, so you won't want to miss out. And to the 12,000 of you who are following me there, thank you. I notice, and so do my industry partners. We're in this together, you know. The more of you they see following along, the more likely they are to send product my way to review for you. So to those of you subscribed to both channels, you're the reason why the industry has gotten behind AEAC the way they have. So a special thank you to you for making that happen for us. I view you as my core, and so do they. These Viral scopes are excellent. I haven't killed this one in, like I said, those three or four reviews. They also make a 3 to 9 by 40. They're both adjustable objective. This one's about 200 bucks. That 3 to 9 by 40, I think, is about 250. You can also get them in Air Guns of Arizona. They've been excellent scopes for me. Long story short, I did not break this scope. Um, this one here is this whole rig is what was on the Beeman R9 that I reviewed last week that I know had was pretty much dead on with everything ocularly centered and leveled in the mounts 
at 25 yards. So I literally plucked it off of that rig, recentered the scope, flattened out the mounts, and set it up at 25 yards again, and I got 10 inches of <laughs> barrel droop. So I didn't break the scope. There's somewhere between 9 and 10 inches of droop in this gun, but the takeaway is that's been my normal over the last three, four years reviewing brake barrels, no matter the brand. There's usually between five and 10 inches. And so I'd be curious to know your experience because that's become my reality. So the good news is there's really easy ways of compensating for that. What you typically do not wanna do is take something like this and at 25 yards, try to dial out 10 inches you know, of, of up because then what you're gonna get is an erector tube inside the scope that is not very ocularly centered and held together by those springs that are in here, trying to hold it into alignment. It's really bound down in one goofy direction. So the scopes become less reliable as far as their point of impact at that point. And that can also bust them. Really the better thing to do is invest in a set of adjustable scope mounts. I use Sports Match, that's what's on here now. They have a one piece, they have a two piece that you see here. The European sourced walnut on the 35 is as vintage as the rest of the gun. It's set up for right-handed shooters and open sights, as suggested by its 10 inches of droop and flat back comb. If you're good with all that, you'll be rewarded with a beautiful piece of lumber and a throwback to 1950s style air gunning, both of which I personally enjoyed very much. A caveat to be on the lookout for is your proper operation of that wedge lock in silent mode. If you're going to use it, be sure to give the barrel a good solid up and down rock once you think that you're locked up. Even if you hear the click, you're not. You'll know what I mean when you give that barrel a good up and down and you feel it lock into its final position. If you don't, this will happen to you and it's perfectly repeatable. Now, unless your pellet's gone supersonic and is breaking the sound barrier, which is horrible for accuracy, by the way, any sound that comes from your spring gun doesn't come from here. It comes from here as that spring is releasing. Now, to some degree, you can control the twang or the boing with the weight of the pellet. What's in here now is the field target trophy green, five and a half grain. And this here, an H&N Barracuda, 10 and a half grain.
If speed is your thing or you've got an aversion to lead, these six and a half grain H&N Barracuda greens may do it for you. They fly fast, flat, and straight, but they are more susceptible to being moved around by the wind. They're particularly useful when backdrop is a concern as their lighter weight helps them to bleed steam more quickly. So it really just comes down to what you're trying to accomplish in the moment. At 25 yards, they're quite effective and do carry their energy well. Due to their lighter weight, their point of impact will be higher, as compared to when sighted in with a 10 grain. And of course, you're going to get more spring twang. With the four mile an hour out of your 10 o'clock, they will drift on you. Flying nine and a half grain 177 pellets out to 50 yards through winds like this is an exercise in patience. It's not too unlike trying to guide dandelion seeds through a hurricane, but if you take your time, it can be done. But if nothing else, it does show how true this old-fashioned shooting system really is, especially since the lead's leaving at around 10 foot-pounds and arriving at about 6. We're really pushing the limits of the equipment here.
Well, that's all for today, guys. And special thanks to Air Guns of Arizona for getting the HW35E into my hands to review for you. You guys know the best way to thank them for that one. Now from here, y'all want to head on over to the Air Gun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion thread on the 35E. I'll leave you a link on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great week, everyone.